Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is today's edition of Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I'm recording this a little bit later than normal but it will still be uploaded and available for your boredom today in a couple of hours after recording it obviously not a couple of hours after you're listening to this because you'll be listening to it in a couple of hours or maybe in a few months who knows when you listen to this so only listen or watch any of my hypnosis sleep sessions when you can safely close your eyes Uh, I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes I'm not going to ask you to become more relaxed physically I'm not going to ask for your mind to start slowing down I'm not going to ask for you to start to notice increased comfort. I'm not going to ask you to notice how your stress levels are starting to dissolve. I'm not going to ask you to really notice the changes in how you feel. All I'm going to ask you to do is just to listen to my voice. That's it. And I'll just talk about certain things. And some days I will talk about what's going on in my life. It's weird that I stress the word my in that sentence. My life. As opposed to the life of somebody that I don't know about. That would be quite weird and difficult in fact for me to talk about someone else's life if I don't know them so I do try and stick to what I know which is my life experiences and nothing I say is necessarily of any importance. Maybe there might be, maybe there might be. That's not even a proper sentence, is it? Maybe, or there might be, not maybe there might be, perhaps, possible, pieces of information that I might discover along the way and present to you within this session of me just talking and although It may seem like all I'm doing is just waffling on. You're right, that is all I'm doing. No, there's there's a little bit more to it. There is an an end result. That end result isn't just you falling asleep whilst I'm talking. Because this might not be the right time. Maybe 
you're using this session to just relax and you can become accustomed or connected to my voice in a way that whenever you hear me talking it might trigger a sense or stimulate a sense of comfort calmness and that in itself can be really useful for you especially when you need it and that's among the most obvious sentences I've said for a while it could be really helpful for you if you need it that's kind of obvious that's not even a particularly exciting sentence is it but however this is your time to just I'm going to just move the covers over release my feet and just let them I'm going to wiggle my toes that's a new thing I'm into wiggling my toes see even new hobbies are boring There's certain things that I do to relax. I'll give you an example. Last night, I didn't feel very well um, emotionally. So I went to the toilet. That's not the whole story, by the way. I mean, if going to the toilet helps you to feel better then that's a good thing, obviously. But this story isn't really about the toilet. It's not a hugely relevant part of the story. But, you know, to me it's like a jigsaw puzzle, you know. it's If you've got a jigsaw puzzle and it's a scenic view and you've got trees and you've got the sky and you've got fields, so you might have the whole picture, pretty much. There might be a piece, you know, a piece of the sky missing. And even though you can see everything on there, you're going to notice that missing cloud. That's a metaphor for me going to the toilet in this particular story. You know, missing pieces of jigsaw puzzles, very much like going to the toilet. It's a kind of a maybe a unusual connection to make. But I'll get on with this story because I'm sure you're really looking forward to the end of this. And. After going to toilet, I decided to listen to the radio on my television. So it's a radio station called Smooth. And it's a quite relaxing sounds, relaxing songs from the past. Turned the light off in the room and I just reclined in my black recliner chair I guess I didn't need to mention that it was a recliner because I just told you that I reclined I wouldn't be able to recline would I if it was a, a standard chair unless I suppose unless I had a really bendy back or I just sat on it the wrong way around or I suppose I'd 
somehow readjusted the chair with power tools or something, you know, but I haven't done any of that. Besides, I don't think that would have been very relaxing. So I just reclined back in the chair and I took my glasses off. And it might seem a little bit unusual to take your glasses off when you've got your eyes closed. It might seem a bit unusual to leave them on, I don't know. But it feels quite relaxing to take the glasses off and put them on the side. I was going to do a pun there and say, in fact, it feels quite spectacular. Spectac spectacle. Oh well. And I really could feel the, the air in the room on my face, around my eyes. And even though my glasses aren't, are not made of steel, they're not heavy steel, it's not, they're not really, really heavy. You know, I don't, um, I don't have to take them off when I go jogging because it hurt my, hurts my knees too much. Because of the weight. Well, actually, I don't go jogging, so that's not a very good. Uh, example really but then you're not going to know that I don't go jogging in this I don't unless I tell you but then I just have told you I used to go jogging years ago in fact when I was little um, I say little when I was about 10 No, younger, eight maybe. I used to like running around a park. We had a park near where I lived when I was that age. I was about eight years old. And I used to run around the park, you know, just jogging gently. I never did used to run. Um, I mean, there was no ice cream waiting for me at the finish line. You know, there was, there was no reason to really rush. So I just uh, just went gently, got in the groove, and I just keep going and going and going, and I always quite liked it. And then when I got to, I think I was 12, 11 or 12, and I had my appendix out. And I was quite inactive physically for a few weeks because I couldn't, I couldn't just because uh, uh, you know stitches in my stomach, and I was just uh, had to be a little bit careful. Plus, it was yeah you know, a little bit tender, a little bit tender. And I remember when I had the stitches out went to the doctor, or went to the hospital just to have that done, have a check up and I decided and I actually said to my parents, I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna start going running, start getting fitter. I don't think they were really taking much notice of what I was saying. I don't even recall if, if either of them answered I suppose it wasn't that relevant to them um, but to me it was and I decided to do that and I, I stuck to it and I did start going running and when I was in hospital with my appendix because I've, I've been in hospital twice for operations one was for my adenoids because I used to be partially deaf in one ear I used to suffer with ear aches and so I had my adenoids removed and I was told I had a slow pulse at least I might be making that up I don't mean I'm, I'm lying I mean and I, clearly I'm not making it up to add excitement you know I'm adding filler 
adding a bit of uh, extra sugar to that apple crumble. Not, I don't mean that way, but I know when I was 12 or 11 and I had my appendix out, I was told by the nurse, Nurse Nichols her name was, I really liked her, and she told me that I had a very slow pulse. And I said, oh, what does that mean? I'm not sure if I was really interested in the answer. What I was interested in is spending just a few more minutes with Nurse Nichols because I really liked her. And I was only 11 and she was a lot older than me. She probably wasn't very old herself, maybe 19, 20, but still a bit old, too old for an 11 year old. And uh, as she said to me later on, when I gave her an apple, it's very generous, but she can't wait for me. She can't wait seven years until I'm 18. It's, you know, it's, she'll be nearly 30 herself, and she was hoping to have kids at some point. And, uh, and I said, it's okay, it's fine, but you know, maybe we can stay in touch. And she said, no, you're 11. Um, I don't want to stay in touch she didn't say it quite as kindly as that <laughs> no, she, she, none of that happened I'm, I am making out I did give her an apple or was it a pear it might have been a banana it was a piece of fruit anyway when I left the hospital I gave her a piece of fruit which seemed like a really nice thing to do at the time, because um, I really liked her. But on reflection, it's a really rubbish present, isn't it? Giving someone a piece of fruit, it's it's no more romantic or generous or exciting than giving someone a a toilet roll. Or a ten packs, or some cellar tape, or a bag, a bag of rice. I mean, you know, it's, it wasn't the most. Uh, I don't think she remembered me. I don't think it was a memorable gift, but. I wanted to give her something, and um, but I was still a kid, you know. I was still, I wasn't just a uh, eleven years old. I was, I was a very young eleven. I was always very small for my age, and uh, maybe twelve. I think I was eleven. I think I was eleven. Anyway, the nurse said to me that I got a very slow pulse. And I said, oh, what does that mean? And she said, it means um, we're just it's slow, slower than average. Um, but, but the good thing is, I said, yeah. Because although she was talking to me, she, she was leaving pauses, the good thing is. And then she left a pause. I don't know if she wanted me to interject and say, yeah. But anyway, I did. I said, yeah. She said, uh, the good thing is you could be a long distance runner. Now at the time, I think I wanted to be a policeman. I mean, it was dependent on quite a few things. One being whether or not I was going to be able to grow tall enough because in them days you had to be a certain height and I wasn't, t I never, I was never tall enough to be a policeman. When I was younger now it doesn't seem to matter. Um, even if you could walk under a fridge it seems to still be okay to be a policeman or woman, you know, so but back then it was a very, you know, they were very strict about that and 
had to have a certain amount of qualifications and which is another reason um, yeah that's what was another reason why I couldn't well, I enjoyed stealing very much into shoplifting at the time <laughs> not really well I did chocolate I, I stole a chocolate bar once I'm not I'm not proud of myself and I'm not I'm not advocating stealing Mars bars so in, in no way am I saying oh, it's, you should all go out and steal Mars bars and I'm not honestly it's not it's not what I'm about I'm not I'm not dedicated 12 years of my life towards what I'm doing here just to have it all be ruined because somebody listens to me and goes out on a a Mars bar stealing spree you know I really don't want that to happen I mean just if you can't afford the Mars bar even maybe save up some money or ask somebody perhaps if they maybe buy you a Mars bar and possibly you might have a friend or someone, a relative that already has a Mars bar that they might share it with you or maybe you might know someone that's bought a you know like a big pack of Mars bars maybe a fun pack and they might give you a Mars bar and although yeah, the Mars bars are smaller. It's still better than breaking the law. It's, you know, it's, it's a slippery slope. Start with Mars bars and you end up stealing Snickers and I don't know, it's, you know, it's it's not worth going down that road, it's... But yeah, I did want to be a, a policeman. A police person. But then I thought, so I've got a slow pulse. Does that mean that I'll live longer? Because animals that have very, very hot fast heartbeats fast pulses generally live less time because they're you know they're I guess the world is moving slower for them because everything they're in their mind is going quickly so for me maybe everything's moving fast and I'm the one moving slowly I do like to just observe the world observe what's going on without getting emotionally involved in whatever may be occurring So I did, I had this idea in my mind that I was going to become a long distance runner and I remember one day, it was, I think it was a sports day, it was, some, it was something at the school where, or it might have been, it was some track event anyway and there was a few of us and we were getting ready to go and I did the, yeah, I did the 100 metres and I beat everybody. And I just absolutely just, I, I was way ahead of everyone. Couldn't believe how fast I was running. And I thought, well, maybe it's not just a long distance. I can do shorter distances as well. So I get to the end 
the finish line. I remember I always remember this. I remember the, the feeling of glory as I got to the finish line of the hundred meters and I just turned round because I was gonna make some funny faces at the at the others as they crossed the line behind me. And something happened, I was very really surprised. They kept on running. It turned out it was a 200 meters. And to this day, I'm still not sure if I would have been able to do well in the 200. Or was it the 400? Anyway, it was a lot. It was a, they were running for what seemed ages. Then as I got older and I started doing karate and I, I did go jogging regularly. Now every morning I'd be out running down the beach getting myself fit and strong. Well fit anyway. And I said love it. And ever since throughout my adult life I've had periods when I went out jogging, went running. So I'm not really sure what the point of that story was. I think sometimes I just want to tell people stuff and just know that it's done now. It's, uh, I told you the story and we can all just move on with our lives. You know, let's not this, let's not let this hold us back. Let's not let this story affect our friendship. You know, I've told you the story and I appreciate that it might not have been life changing. However, the ability to let go of your own stuff and to be able to you know that place in your mind where you just you can just sit there or lie there you can just be at peace in that place comfortable calm And there's a sense of quiet inside you. And that feeling of comfort isn't dependent upon outside stuff. It's not dependent upon uh, the house that you're in being silent or it's not dependent upon you know everyone outside the house being quiet you don't have to have music playing necessarily it can just be your place your safe healing place it's like a room maybe but for me it's more a feeling there's been a many times I, I've got into that state got into that that mode of just release where I'm not really thinking about anything I'm just in touch with a sense of comfort that's just naturally there for me 
and you to enjoy knowing that you can have this feeling whenever you wish I just think it's a good opportunity to take advantage of your natural ability to embrace that sense of calmness not just in your body but also in your mind and there's a, a real sense of now a real sense of this very moment I just went to scratch my eye and I forgot that I didn't have my eye, my glasses on so I actually put my thumb underneath the imaginary glasses to get to my eye I just thought I'd let you know what's going on while we're together. And how is your body feeling right now? You can just get in touch with those physical sensations that you can feel your muscles relax and in the background there's a plane in the distance nice sometimes I have those types of sounds that maybe make this recording unique or not depending on how you feel about planes and how does your mind feel right now how calm is your mind How loose are your shoulders, and your neck, and your chest? How relaxed is your whole upper body? How relaxed? Are your hips? How relaxed are your legs, feet and toes? How relaxed are your arms? your hands
your mind. good thing about being able to just let go and relax in your own time allowing me and you to just share this space of comfort easily and naturally just being here just me on my bed sitting up in a room that's now dark compared to what it was when I started this my stomach is making some quite strange sounds I think uh, if I'm hungry or my stomach has created a new language I can hear the birds outside sense of stillness apart from that one really <laughs> loud bird and all the other birds are quiet I'm wondering if the other birds are thinking oh no we've got a noisy neighbour they're at it again Sounds like they might be arguing. Or if they're domestic. All the other birds are just asleep, settled down, comfortable. They had something to eat, a little worm pie, maybe for dessert worm meringue or something and just watching some telly maybe the Sopranos or Sesame Street I don't know whatever birds like to watch Sesame Street I suppose Big Bird then we're making a little bit of sound and now quiet down I think they might have gone out to the pub and you can just hear the, the faint sound of the other birds in their individual nests gossiping about their new neighbours and my stomach continues to try to communicate with me with some of the very unusual sounds Maybe it's a sign of relaxation. 
relaxation. Oh, I might need to go to the toilet. It might be because I had a ginger biscuit, a ginger nut biscuit before I started this recording. I do like ginger nuts but sometimes the ginger can cause my tummy to become a bit too vocal. I've now got a little urge for, maybe a little craving for ginger cake. I don't, not something I eat very regularly, but I do like a bit of ginger cake. I guess when I start talking about ginger cakes, but we mean so the session is coming near to its finale. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say goodbye. Hopefully, I will make another one of these. Let me bore you to sleep. Recordings. Tomorrow. And you can listen to this on my website, jasonnewland.com. You can listen to it on my podcast, it's a pod being. And it's called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And you can listen to it on my SoundCloud podcast. And you can also listen to it on my Sleep Hypnosis podcast on Podomatic. And, or you can watch the video on my YouTube channel, my Sleep Hypnosis YouTube channel. It's really just a case of finding whatever you choose, whatever you like, however you like to watch or listen to these sessions. If you're a user of TuneIn or Spreaker or you use iTunes, you know, whatever ones you use. I'm there, I'm on most of the podcast hosts. So that's pretty much everything from me for today. Thank you for watching and listening, or listening, or watching, whichever way that you're experiencing this recording. And please remember to be kind to yourself. Take care. <laughs>